Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you a few options to connect legacy Firewire audio interfaces to your computer. You may recognize me because I've made two other videos on this subject about connecting Firewire devices. The first one I showed how to connect hard drives to a Mac computer, and in the second I showed you how to connect camcorders using a Windows computer. I often got comments from users saying that they have an audio interface such as this one from M-Audio or others from Motu, Focusrite, RME, and they ask if they still work. And the answer is, eh, maybe. It's a little more complicated than the devices I showed in my last videos, and that's why I bought all of this equipment to try out because I myself was curious to see if I could get it to work, and I got mixed results. So let's jump into it. First off, you're going to need some adapters. You probably already knew that. Now to determine which ones you need, you have to look at your audio interface and then at the computers you have at your disposal. Let's first look at this interface. This is an M-Audio Firewire Solo and it features two 6-pin Firewire 400 connections. This was the most common type of Firewire. If your connector is smaller, then you have a 4-pin Firewire 400 connection. This is sometimes found on audio interfaces and devices like camcorders which have their own power supply. The difference between the two is that the extra two pins are used to power devices like portable hard drives and even the original iPod. Now if you have a slightly newer interface, perhaps a larger one with tons of inputs and outputs, you probably have a square connector which is an 8 pin Firewire 800 connector. The two extra pins in this connection provide greater bandwidth and capabilities. In some cases, you could get up to 48 channels of audio going through this one cable. In fact, one of the reasons why FireWire was superior to USB is that FireWire streams the data, and it can do so bi-directionally, rather than in packets and in one direction at a time like USB. This is why audio and video devices typically use this format. FireWire devices can also daisy-chain, whereas USB can't. It's a shame USB became the more common standard, but with Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4.0 coming soon, a lot of these benefits are coming back, but I digress. Next, you need to look at your computer. If you have an older computer, you may find a FireWire 800, 400, or Mini 400 connection on board. If you have a newer computer, then you need to look for either a Thunderbolt 1 or 2 connection, which looks like this, or a Thunderbolt 3, which looks the same as a USB Type-C connector. Now, it's important to note, USB-C is not compatible with FireWire. The only way to make it work is if you have a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt adapter and a Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter and the only ones I've found to work are the ones from Apple. So now that you've determined what connection you need to get from your interface to your computer, you can pick the required adapters and or cables to make the connection. For your convenience, I've included links to everything you'll need in my video description. So if you're watching this video in an embedded window on a third-party website, make sure to stop here, click on the title of the video, and that will pop you over to YouTube where you can access my links. Also, if you use my Amazon links, it helps support my channel because a small commission may come back to me if you decide to purchase anything. But don't worry, your price stays the same and Amazon always tends to have the best prices anyways, even cheaper than Apple. Now another thing you want to consider is if the device you're trying to connect is officially supported or not. In my case, I purchased this M-Audio Firewire Solo, which was an entry level but very popular interface at the time. But if you look on M-Audio's website, they don't support anything higher than Windows 7 and Mac OS X Lion. Now I knew this before I purchased this interface because I did my research and I was determined to see if I could make it work with anything newer. And in my case, I got mixed results. First I tested with my work Mac running Mac OS Catalina and then my personal Mac running Mojave. And I could see the interface was connected, but I was unable to get the drivers installed. The installer would just fail right away, even when I dug deep into the package and tried to extract the drivers. I had a hard time until I loaded Lion into a VM and then I was able to see that it uses a series of goofy scripts rather than a typical PKG installer. I then discovered it uses kernel extensions, which I was able to make work up until macOS 10 El Capitan, and then after that, in macOS Sierra and newer, Apple required all kernel extensions to be signed, so unless I went through a hassle of purchasing an Apple developer certificate to sign the drivers that I didn't even create, it just simply wouldn't work. On OS X El Capitan, however, I was able to get it to work, but it does come with a few downsides like not being able to open the settings, which could be an issue. On newer OS's like macOS Catalina, I noticed it's possible to record audio, but instead of it using channels 1 and 2, it actually comes through channels 3 and 4. So you might have luck by adjusting these settings within your audio recording application. So in the end, I decided trying to make this fully work with a modern Mac just wasn't worth the effort, so unless you have a really old Mac that's able to run an older OS, 
you might want to look into running your interface with Windows. Most Macs can run Windows via Boot Camp, so that might be an option for you, which I'll talk about in a moment. On the PC side, I first tried this very old Windows 7 laptop, which is officially supported, and it actually has a 4-pin Firewire 400 mini plug right here on board. However, if you don't have this connection, but do have a PCMCIA card slot, another option you can do is buy a card which would slide into here and give you two Firewire 400 ports. In my case, I'm going to use a 4-pin to 6-pin cable to connect my interface. But before I do that, it's important to install the software first, and then everything will work. Although I did learn this interface is not hot pluggable, meaning you can't connect or disconnect the device while the PC is on. So it may cause a blue screen, so make sure you read these directions. I was able to access all the settings, see levels, and make recordings without issue. Using Windows 7 on an old laptop. Using Windows 7 on an old laptop. So then I jumped all the way up to a PC with Windows 10, 1909, and a Thunderbolt 3 connection, which required me to adapt it down to Thunderbolt 2, and then FireWare 800 using the Apple adapters, and then I used a FireWare 800 to 400 cable to connect to the interface. Now sometimes PCs are a little fussy with Thunderbolt devices, so you may need to search for the Intel Thunderbolt software on your computer and allow the connection. And in some cases, you may even need to go into your PC's BIOS and adjust the setting there so that the OS can even see the connection. So once I confirmed the FireWire connection was being detected, I went ahead and installed the drivers, and to my surprise, it worked right away despite not being officially supported. I didn't have to do anything special with extracting the drivers or anything like that, it just worked. Test, 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 one, two, three, we are testing. Test, 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 one, two, three, we are testing. I was able to access the settings, record multiple audio tracks, and output sounds, no problem at all. So if you have a newer Mac computer, one option you can do is install Windows 10 via Boot Camp and simply use that anytime you want to use your interface. You could also try virtualization software such as VMware Fusion or Parallels, but in my case, it would only share the audio drivers from the native OS rather than connect them directly to the VM, so Boot Camp is your best option here. Now in my case, I didn't experience any issues with audio dropouts, distortion, or loss of audio quality. However, if you do, it's likely not because of all these adapters, but rather a setting. The first thing you should check is the sample rate. 99% of the time, you'll want to either select 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, so if you already have it set to one of those, try the other one. The next thing you can check is the clock source. Again, usually the default is what you want here, but if you experience dropouts, changing this might fix the issue. So after all of this, if you find yourself struggling to find a way to make the connection or to get it to work with your newer operating system, you have two options. You can either find an older computer on eBay, Craigslist, or similar. Typically higher-end business-grade laptops like Lenovo ThinkPads have these kind of connections, and then you could just use that dedicated system just for this purpose. On the other hand, maybe you've decided it's time to retire your legacy interface and upgrade to a newer one, which uses USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt. I'll put some links down in the video description of some models that look pretty good and are widely supported in case you decide to go that direction. So there you go. I hope you found this video was useful, and if you did, you can help support my channel by hitting that thumbs up button, which tells YouTube this was a good video, and should recommend it to others. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any of my other videos. Finally, don't forget to use my Amazon links in the video description anytime you need to purchase anything on Amazon. Videos like this one would not be possible without your support because I bought all of this gear with my own money for the purposes of making this video to help you all out. So when you use my Amazon link, it really helps fund videos like this one. So what did you think? Let me know down in the comments, and if you have any questions, I'll try my best to help out. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.